all earlier preceding chapters i mean all the earlier units we have studied related to hydraulics the basics of hydraulics various parts accessories and their symbolic representations since we all know the symbolic representations are used worldwide and hence to understand to a layman what exactly the entire system is the symbols play very important role therefore in today's unit along with simple objectives which are nothing but identifying various symbols and then appropriately placing them so as to complete a circuit which will probably if if been uh, uh, implemented and used as a part of industrial case study would give an ultimate result the objectives which you are which you are looking at are finally will be seen as the outcome once we develop a simple circuit moving ahead when we say a simple hydraulic system or a simple hydraulic circuit it encompasses various elements into it and if we see their role their role will be not only to execute the system for the desired outcome but at the same time it should give a good performance and along with the system which has been developed should be a cost effective one hence to learn about what all systems are and how these systems are playing a very important role in industrial applications this unit we will try to cover up through a simple circuit basically when i say a simple circuit remember this is a circuit which you all can see in very simple machine tools as we all know machine tool and some of their accessories are working using the hydraulic forces these hydraulic forces and the hydraulic elements are nothing but the parts which we will be representing as a as a symbolic representation hence today's learning objective will be finding out a simple solution to control a single acting cylinder of course a single acting hydraulic cylinder and when i say a problem statement is single acting hydraulic cylinder let me take you through various parts which are required in order to develop the system and not only that i'll be asking you to take a minute to identify these parts when i see the parts which are required to develop a system and if i'm not wrong in all earlier units we have seen in a very specific way have the symbols are developed and have these are correlated with their working the parts which are used in order to develop a simple problem statement which you all are looking at i mean controlling of a single acting cylinder and as i said couple of minutes back i'll be placing the parts in front of you take a minute so that you all can identify that
the first part which i have drawn is a major element in all the hydraulic systems along with that we need this the second part in fact we need this as well can you tell me the name of these parts yes you are absolutely right the parts are pump reservoir and a filter these are the basic elements of any hydraulic system you name now when i say these are the basic elements of any hydraulic system along with this the additional elements which are required are i hope you know this part which safeguards the system against the excessive load excessive pressure you are right in defining it it is a pressure relief valve which is of a normally closed category in fact we do require a direction control valve and a single acting cylinder now when i say we need direction control valve and a single acting cylinder again i'll be giving you a minute and i and i hope within this minute you will be able to draw in your notebook these two elements first one as direction control valve and second which is a single acting cylinder i hope you all are doing it yes so the moment when i say a direction control valve this has a very important role to play this will divert a fluid towards the ends of a cylinder when i say ends of a cylinder let me show you how a cylinder looks like this is a simple cylinder which has an input side and which do carry an output side a fluid will be supplied into this towards piston end side and whatever fluid which was earlier accumulated onto rod end side will eventually come down from this side which results into forward movement of piston and a rod piston and a rod comes out of a cylinder we refer this as a forward movement and we ref we mark it as f and in latter case if we need to have a reverse movement of a rod and a piston inside the cylinder what we require it is required to send a fluid towards a rod end side so that now the force will be exerted onto this and fluid which was earlier accumulated onto this side will eventually come back where does this fluid go this fluid finally goes back into a tank through which a fluid keeps on recirculating this we refer it as a reverse movement i mean r but if you see our problem statement here we are not interested to have or we are not interested to send a fluid 
and to both the ends of piston, it is specifically mentioned that a cylinder which will be probably used into a system must be of a category single acting. What does that mean? It means there has to be a cylinder, piston and a rod which should act using the hydraulic force, I mean the fluid which is flowing into a system for its forward movement and whatever force which is required to be initiated, I mean the force which is which 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 will be exerted onto a system, it should not be through hydraulic means, it should be by its own. Hence, a single acting cylinder needs a spring towards a piston inside. Right? No, it should be towards a rod inside. Coming back on to how this single acting cylinder, cylinder will work, we have to only initiate the hydraulic force towards the piston side. Upon exerting this force, a spring will be compressed, a rod will come out of a cylinder, we will be referring that as a forward movement and the moment we make or we release the force which was earlier exerted onto piston inside, the spring now it will come into action so as to send back a rod and a piston to observe a reverse movement of this. This is what a single acting cylinder which we are required as a part of development of this particular problem statement. Now, when I say we need a pump, we are interested to have a reservoir, then we need a filter, then we need a pressure relief valve which will safeguard a system which is of a normally closed category. Then we need a single acting cylinder. And we need a direction control valve. Why I am not showing you a direction control valve in its symbolic representation? Because there is one reason behind it. Today, we will not only see the development of a system on a basis of drawing of this system over a board, but at the same time, I will try to take you through a very simple simulation ride, wherein the circuit that we have developed will be checked for its conformity. Moving ahead, let us try to connect the elements that we all have sketched in an appropriate manner, so that ultimately the circuit will be seen as a complete circuit. Hence, we have a reservoir, then a filter, then a pump, pump which requires an electric current, hence we will be connecting this with an electric motor. Here I will play in a very dramatic way, I will keep this box open for your end. Then we need a pressure relief valve. And through a direction control valve, a fluid will enter into 
piston side of a cylinder so as to come compress a spring and then we will have a forward movement of this. This is how a system would look like in a nutshell, but in order to check the performance of the system the important element is this direction control valve which type of direction control valve is suitable in this single acting hydraulic circuit that we have to check and for that matter if I say I will be using a direction control valve which carries two positions which has four points P, T, A and B through which fluid passes which is operated on a basis of lever and which will be released to its original position upon relieving a force which was earlier exerted onto a lever. If I intend to choose this in the circuit, will this work? That is my question. I would ask you to check whether the direction control valve which has been shown will be worked into the system that we are looking at. This is this was the earlier circuit. I would ask all of you to plus this direction control valve. You can have a minute, take this in your book and try and fit this direction control valve into a single acting cylinder hydraulic circuit. Just check it. Is it working? No, it will not. Why? Because here we are interested to have only one point from a direction control valve which will be further connected with the single point of a single acting cylinder. There is no another point and here if you check the direction control valve has got two points and these two points would in latter phase be connected to the two points which are available over a cylinder. Hence the answer simple answer is no we are not interested to have this kind of direction control valve rather we are interested to check a direction control valve which will have only one point in place like this, this direction control valve carries only one point and, and look at the second position. There are two positions, this is the position number one and this one is the position number two. The first position in itself defines that upon connected a pump point fluid will be diverted through point A towards the connected point of a cylinder and once the force which was which which is onto a lever once an operator pulls a lever the system will work in such a way that A now will be connected to a point called T. 
So, this phase will be superimposed over this once operator pulls a lever. Let us check whether the system that we have developed works well with all the parts which are selected and in order to check this here I would request you to give me a minute so that I can switch from our learning mode over to a simulation mode. Just give me a moment. I hope you all can see a white screen along with certain drop down menus onto the left of a screen. What I will be doing? I will be trying to connect various parts which we have used while building a system and once they are connected in place, we will see that whether system works in a appropriate way or not. As I said, a direction control valve which carries only one point which is operated on a basis of lever and which will be relieved to its original position which will be brought to its original position upon releasing a force over a lever. Then we will have a relief valve which will probably release a force and the outcome of which is safeguarding a system and now comes the important part of a circuit which is nothing but a simulation. This is how we will be building a system and once we build a system, when we try to simulate it, before we simulate remember to ensure all the points which are available over a board are closed. See here, there is one open point and it is showing us a message that the connections are open. Which is that connection? It is a connection of a tank. What is required? It is required to connect this point with the tank. Once we complete, check. The pump has started drawing a fluid from a tank. Once it reaches at the direction control valve point, since it is closed, the fluid will be diverted into a tank again. Remember, even though I have shown three tanks, in reality there is only one tank. But the connections are made in such a way that all the fluid in a system goes back into a tank. But for the understanding purpose here, I have shown three different reservoirs. That does not mean system needs three different reservoirs. So, pump when it the fluid when it comes from a pump it observes that the direction control valve point is closed hence the pressure relief valve come into picture Early, if you check earlier point it was closed and now in simulation phase 
you all can notice that it has opened, it has been opened. Now, I will be exerting a force over this, force over lever side of a direction control valve. Carefully look at the way our system is functioning. Just carefully look at it. Let me just give you what I will be doing. I will be exerting a force over this. What has happened? No doubt fluid has reached towards piston inside. But when, when I am releasing a force because of a spring tension, the direction control wall is coming back onto its original position. As a result, are we observing the reverse movement of single acting cylinder? No. Why? Because there is no force which is acting onto rod inside when we are making the piston inside force equals 0. So, what has been remained? we need a spring return cylinder. Let us check it again. I will be exerting a force onto this. Once I release a force, once I release a force, remember when I am releasing a force, it means direction control valve will come back to its original position. Look at the cylinder movement, single acting cylinder movement. It has reached to its original position. Hence, whatever we have drawn, look at it here, we plussed at this position, we have plussed a direction control valve which is of a 3 by 2, 3 points and 2 positions category which works well in the system. I hope you all have understood the way with which system works. What we have seen? We have seen a very simple hydraulic circuit, of course, a single acting type and not only we have tried to develop it, we also have seen its simulation using a fluid sim software. That's all for today. Thank you.